Hey, I just wanted to go over the Home Assistant Energy Dashboard that I was able to create. Uh, there's not a whole bunch of tutorials on creating the dashboard with solar and getting it working correctly. Most of those are kind of texts from, or uh, you know, um, their articles, there might be different languages or they might be hypothetical. This one is something that I actually did and I got some help from a coworker that worked in the solar industry to make sure I have most of the right stuff going. There's still some questions on whether it's completely right or not, but comparing this with what my providers are, are giving us, it seems to be pretty accurate. So to go over the dashboard, here's today's. And uh, we have the electricity usage over here. You can see that um, you know we consumed 0.37 kilowatts an hour. Uh, we gave back 1.4 this hour, meaning we returned the grid the exact same to 1.4. And you can see this kind of changed throughout the day. Um, and go back to yesterday, you can see a little bit more detail on it. You can see we start to, to consume solar, and as we consume solar, we give energy back to the grid. Um, and you can see these numbers over here are for the entire day. So we consumed 31.7 kilowatts an hour for the entire day, and solar consumed 34.8. Now during the early morning, we don't consume from solar since the sun is not up and we're consuming from the grid. The idea being you should be able to give that back to the grid and then uh, re use it as you need and use the grid as a battery. We haven't really seen that work too well for us. We are thinking about getting a battery installed there, which would show up over here, which would be awesome. This low carbon thing is something that you can get from the energy setup over here. You give it your coordinates and it just kind of gives you some, some baseline about being carbon neutral. Um, solar production, I can see every single inverter that we have over here and how it's doing. So if any of them fail, you can see that over here. You can even set up alerts if you wanted to, if any of them are producing significantly less than the others. I have a cost set up. We have peak hours. So certain hours on certain days cost more or less than other hours. And you have something set up in the map where you can actually calculate price based on an entity. And I used ChatGPT to create an entity based on a screenshot that I have of our provider on how much it is for a given day and a given hour, uh, excluding weekends. And I'll go over that as well. Individual device usage, you can see our pool is higher in the morning when we run the cleaner. Um, the, the server in the gym is always high because that's what has you know our Synology, our Unify system, and pretty much our 3D printer, everything and then the ACs and everything else. Now I have the Emporia View um, 3 and it's got 16 clamps. I actually only have 15 in use and I'll go over that as far as why I only have 15 at the moment, but there's a whole bunch that isn't being used, that is not being monitored at, at the moment. Um, we wish we could get more than 16 and there's ways around that by adding another um, uh, power monitor in there, but I'm not sure we're, we're gonna do that. You know, like the mini fridge over here, maybe we don't need to monitor the mini fridge. Maybe we should monitor the fridge in the garage instead or the freezer in the garage instead. And if that starts dropping down, we, we can alert on, on that. Um, so here's today's, I believe. Yeah, it's still going. I just turned off the fridge by the pool so we can see that starting to drop. It's great. It's awesome. Uh, let's go over the setup. So the energy configuration. Um, and preview three total daily energy is the grid consumption. I had this set up for every single uh, device that we had, but you would kind of be missing some of the stuff there. As in, you know, if you have 16 clamps, but 30 circuits or 20 circuits, you're not gonna be get, getting all of it. So this is actually the positive amount of um, the, the phases A and B. And then the return to grid is the negative amount of phases A and B. This is how I did it there. And then this is the, the grid carbon footprint. This is just something that you can get from the map. Now you can do, if you have a solar panel, panels, uh, you, you can get these inverters, uh, the, the, the readings by two, two different ways. One, you should have it clamped into your, your, your box outside. There should be one or two wires coming in from your solar inverters telling you how much you're getting from all of them. Um, I have that on my clamp 16, which I've disabled and I'm gonna use for something else. And the reason for that is because I was comparing that to my on-phase setup, which is my solar system, and it's local polling, which is fine by me as long as it's not cloud. And it was pretty accurate the entire time based on what I was getting on that clamp 16. So I'm gonna use that clamp 16 for something else and I can get specific details on each inverter for the 15 or the 14 that I have here. So that frees up something else as long as the M-Phase stuff is working, which it looks like it is. 
don't have a battery, individual device usage. This does not get calculated into anything up here. This gets compared to everything up here and it'll tell you out of this much, out of this much power, here's what's using what, and here's how much is not monitored. So if you go back over here, you can see we should have, yeah, so we have um, untracked consumptions 0.2 kilowatts an hour, and it's because that's the difference between all of your phases and your individual de de devices for each hour. And then this is tracking per day. So some stuff that I had to set up, um, let's see, that goes over to grid consumption, solar, low carbon, the installation. Uh, the Emporia View 3, here's a picture of me installing it in our box. We had Curb, and Curb was supposed to be free forever. It came with solar, we didn't pick it, and all of a sudden Curb got sold and is starting to charge for it, so we tore it out of there and we installed Emporia View 3 instead. Um, all the wires get fed through here, and one of the cool things about Emporia that you can get uh, with them and not even from any of the other free option to reconnect some of them yourself is that the wires can actually come off. So it's, you know, fitting 16 wires through here got a bit tight. All I had to do was unscrew these ends and then I would screw a little, or I would um, send a little loop through here, stick the wire there and then pull it through. And I did that, you know, for the last like probably eight wires or seven wires where it got a bit tight and everything was perfect. I could probably fit another three or four in there if it was possible. But unfortunately the view only does um, up to 16 circuits. But um, this down here, no, this over here is our solar. And uh, we did have a clip there. We disconnected that clip. But you can kind of see we're fitting clips around, you know, all the, all the wires. So um, we have like a, the bedroom and, uh, I'm sorry, the AC for one room or one section of the house, the AC for another section of the house is down here. The oven is up here. We I, I kind of try to do my best to put a, each clamp around a wire versus putting a clamp on one and then doubling it or 1.7 the voltage because uh, they're not always the exact same and I, would, I wanted to prefer kind of accuracy over a guesstimate for that power just for now. Um, everything worked out fine. Up here is our mains. You can see the clamps around the mains kind of hidden behind there and everything is off while I work on it. All right, so after getting those set up, um, you know, I followed the DigiBlur guide on the Emporia View 3. They were fantastic. I also were on their, I was in their, their Discord room. They were fantastic there as well. Um, I copied and pasted this for the most part and then had to change quite a bit for solar. And I also had to change it because I installed every single one of the clamps incorrectly. And I'll go over that in a bit too. All right, so for the settings, you can see here's um, for the inverters. Um, I actually, the inverters that I got from uh, on phase, they, they don't give you the power. They'll give you the energy, but you have to convert that to power. So I used an integral sensor over here. Um, can we go to, let's see, device info. So here's the integral sensor over here. Um, it gives you the kilowatts an hour based on the watts over here. And um, again, this is the integral sensor. You can see that I created a whole bunch of them over here, including the return to energy on the grid. This will be an important one for you to, to use. Let's see if I can get the um, Verta 1 power, this guy. How can I get the actual setting options? Okay, yeah. So I did trapezoidal. It doesn't really matter which one you use. They're all going to be relatively accurate. But... Um, I did watts and an hour. That's how you set them up. So I, it doesn't look like you can see them here, but basically, oh yeah, uh, uh, kilowatts an hour. So that's gonna say like, what's your unit of, of measurement? I actually pick kilowatts and then, um, you know, the duration is an hour and then you create the, this guy. So I did this one for every single inverter that I had and this is what allows you to use each individual one in that energy da dashboard. Um, and if you go to on phase envoy, I don't know if I can see anything here directly, but now you can see all the 15 de devices in here. So these are all my in in inverters. Um, let's see, don't worry about that one. All right, so here's the template that I create. Here's some, some templates that I created. The return to, to, to grid, um, the center power, let's see, I did the right and left, and then I just added them t together. So instead of having a right and a left, I have one, and I make sure that it's the positive. So I use this export absolute as the positive. And then the current energy rate, let's see. 
Yeah, so this is what I use to calculate peak hours for our energy provider. So I can use this to say how much it is per you know per hour of per day. Again, I use ChatGPT. I, I sent ChatGPT a screenshot of our energy plan and it spit th this out. And I also created th this guy is on peak time, so I can use automations to, to turn off certain certain things if on peak is there, or if something starts consuming high energy while on peak, I can send a push notification to myself to make sure that I you know I know what I'm doing if I actually want that on or off or, or, or not. Um, this is the YAML for creating the, um, the Emporia U3 stuff. Uh, it's, it's red here because I just took out the Wi-Fi. I had, I had hard code instead of a secret, so I just put in redacted while I do this video. Um, let's see, most of this was copy pasted. It starts to change. I had to change the frequency. It wasn't working for me. Um, I did timeout one millisecond and frequency 400 kilohertz, and that ended up working. Um, let's see down here, I had to create this uh, invert negative. And the reason why is because, so it has an invert and it has a positive and it has an absolute. And most of this you'll end up using, but the invert also makes it a positive. So if you have a clamp on backwards and you try to invert it, it'll read zero the entire time. So if you wanna invert it and get negative values, then you have to create your own function, which is this minus X over here as a Lambda. Uh, let's see, phase R voltage and L voltage. I didn't change too much there. All right, so remember all of my clips are in backwards. And the reason for that is because when the arrows pointed downwards for the mains, I also had them point inwards for the clamps versus the idea being that the arrows follow power. So downwards for the mains means into the box and then outwards from the box would be following the power. I'm an idiot. Unfortunately, in Arizona, everything is outside and I don't feel like going outside to do this stuff, it's kind of hot in the middle of May, and um, I don't feel like flipping the main again. So I, I did, um, I had an invert negative for this one for the solar, but I've turned it off for now. But basically I had to invert all of them, uh, except for these guys over here. Uh, those ones are on correctly, and then I have the moving average, but here's all the, uh, the circuits that I have over here. And then if you're gonna com combine them, for example, oven, I have on circuits one and two, you have to, or actually, I'm sorry, three and four, then um, you know, over here you do oven power, the lambda is three and four, and you add those up, the return ID, the unit of measurement is watts, and then you add an ID onto it, and then if you want the total daily energy for that, you give it, again, the name, and then the power ID is oven power, the platform is total daily energy, and the accuracy is zero. And then I did the same for the living room AC, which takes two circuits, the master bedroom AC, which takes two circuits, the pool, which takes two circuits, and then the total power is the is uh, phase A and phase B added up, and you do the same thing for total daily energy. So that's a few of the things that had changed in there to get this stuff to work. Uh, but mainly it took forever because I didn't realize that I had them in incorrectly. It took a little while. Uh, and how I figured that out, if, if, you, if these aren't working for you, remove all filters and see what's going on. I removed all filters and everything went negative except for these two. So that's when I realized, okay, it was probably an installation problem. Um, you can get the raw logs from everything over here, which is great. So I, I uh, in the, let's see, in this guy, I added the web server off username and password. I just put in some stuff in there and now you can go directly to it and see it. And this is possible because it's a ESP home. So they all have the same um, UI. I have the same for like the RET GDO to control your, your garage door opener, the uh, rate, uh, rate against the garage door opener. Uh, Emporia View 3, yeah, this is the setup. Uh, we're thinking about adding a battery, which would be this guy over here. Um, it would be kind of nice just to get us through a day. I don't want to install like a you know $5,000 battery or something like that. But let's see, so the wires are removable. I'm going through a list here on phaser inverter. Yeah, I think I had d discussed it, but we chose to go through the solar inverters instead to save a clamp, and I'll reuse that later, and these are pretty accurate. Here's yesterday's. You can see some information going here. You can see that we were kind of, we used almost all the solar that we were consuming over here and then kind of saved a bit over here. This would have been going to battery, the return to grid. Almost all these would have been, that would have been great, uh, but it didn't get it working. Okay, so I think that's everything. Uh, yeah, it works fantastic. Oh, actually, um, that, that is not everything. So the return to grid and the Emporia total daily energy, this is, uh, both of these are right off of the mains. And I had to have a coworker go through, go, go, go with me on, on, on this one to explain what's going on. The total daily energy is the, pos is the positive amount 
from the uh, phase A and phase B. The return to grid is the negative amount from phase A and phase B. And I think that is in the Studio Code server sensor. No, let's see. Where did I put that configuration template? Return to grid power. Okay, so the total daily energy is just the positive uh, uh, amount from those, but the return to grid power I had to create by default here, or I'm sorry, I had to create uh, custom. So I get the right and I get the left, and then I export the right, and, and then I set export to right plus left, and then if it's less than zero, I, um, I make it positive because the, the um, energy dashboard requires your return to grid amount to be positive. And then if it's not, then I return zero. So basically that this is saying, um, if, if I'm returning energy to the grid, meaning if these are returning negative values, then return it as a positive value. So I can use this return to grid power in, the, um, in, 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 in here. So the return to grid power, anytime it's positive, it means I'm actually re returning data, I'm sorry, returning power to, to the grid. Whereas this is the total daily energy that only reads positive, as in I'm consuming day, day, uh, I'm consuming energy from the grid. So yeah, that was a custom one that I had to do that I didn't see done anywhere else. That might be interesting uh, to have in the video for for those other people that want to use the uh, re return to grid power. All right, I think that's everything, and I hope this is useful to somebody. All right. Oh, I also actually have one more thing. Um, I did create a. Where are you? So this is the energy dashboard and then somewhere in, oh, it's up here, energy custom. I just created my own energy dashboard kind of as like a debugging dashboard to watch, um, you know, when values go negative, I can see them here or positive. These are the two phases. Um, here's all the powers from, for all the power from all the clamps. Here's all the inverters. You can see a few of them are kind of acting weird. I'm guessing it's, it's probably because of where the sun is, but I might be troubleshooting that later. And then I have each individual circuit, so like ACA and ACB over here to see what they're doing. And this is what helped me decide to just combine them and not just do one because they read so differently. Uh, if I turn on the living room AC, this might spike up first and then the, this one. And on, on the oven, you can see they're totally different. If I turn on the oven, um, one turns on more than the other. And then if I turn off the oven, it's got a fan that runs and the fan runs off of one circuit. So depending on what you wanted to monitor, it was always going to be in inaccurate. So I chose to monitor both at the same time, and just add, add them up. You can see this is probably like the clock running or something like that, or a fan running, and this isn't pulling anything. So if I was pulling circuit three, I would never know that it was doing anything at all. Uh, but yeah, you can see pretty much every single thing over here, you know, the mini fridge that I had on here, uh, pull equipment A and then B is somewhere down there. Uh, this is the office going, uh, pull equipment, I, uh, uh, this is number two. You can see where is uh, pull equipment A, which is uh, over here, and then two over here instead of A and B, I guess. This is when I unplug the fridge. You can see it drop a whole bunch of energy, which is awesome. Uh, yeah, uh, oven daily energy, power pool power total. So these are all the combined ones down here. And then 16 events would be solar, or I'm sorry, something that the solar was connected to from the inverter. But yeah, um, that's another dashboard that I created that might be useful to, to create if you're debugging and making sure that your energy dashboard is correct based on what you're getting through here. All right, that's it. You have a good day.